Go ahead. Go ahead. So I was at the store with my cousin visiting my family over the holidays, and we were tasked with cooking spaghetti for the family. And he brought me a jar of sauce for the cart, and I said, oh no, put that back, we're actually going to make it from scratch. To which he replied, I don't know what goes in it, so how do I find the ingredients? One in five children actually don't know where their food comes from. A pizza sauce from a tomato, a chip from a potato. So we thought, how do we reconnect kids to food? We get them in the garden, right? And then we discovered the challenge of getting an entire classroom of students to a garden. So we thought, why not bring the garden to them? I'm Jane. Um, Kay and Emily are my teammates. They're not here today, but we are Team Planty. Um, so there's actually a growing disconnect here where one in three children are overweight or obese. Healthcare costs are on the rise. 40% of the food is wasted in the US. Um, and education has proven to be a really good solution in teaching children about their lives, right? Um, school gardens are a really beautiful way to do this, but that's a huge challenge for teachers because of time and resources that they have to implement curriculum. Also, the climate and the space for a school if they don't have an outdoor space or if they're not in sunny Southern California. Um, and additionally, a gap in standards where about 1,000 hours a child is in school a year, an average of three are spent on food and nutrition education. So, Planty is shaking it up with an interactive garden lab for the classroom that's designed to teach food nutrition through science, engineering, and technology, um, and enabling us to grow a healthier generation. What is this, you ask? Me, Planty. I don't unfortunately have the prototype, but I have another photo I can show you too. Um, it's an interactive garden lab that's aeroponic. It's about the size of a small microwave designed for a tabletop, designed with a teacher and a student in mind. It comes with a full curriculum for the teacher that's in line with the science standards and common core, so they can use the science engineering technology to incorporate food and nutrition into the classroom. For the kids, it's interactive. They can use it daily. They can manipulate all the inputs, the lights, the water, the nutrients. Um, it's clear design, which you can kind of see, so you can see all of the ears, so they can program and kind of see everything happening at once. So, what's on the marketplace for this now? There's some other things that have the technology that's similar with a tabletop garden. Um, none of those have any sort of integrated curriculum to get it into the classroom. And anything that has curriculum kind of around this doesn't have the science and technology to really get it in there, getting around those kind of standards that I mentioned before. So with our competitive advantage, we actually have four customers that are ready to purchase. Um, they are education-focused nonprofits that currently have school garden programs, things like that. So they're in, like one of our big, big partners that once is excited for it is in the Bay Area, the North Bay Children's Center. They're in nine districts in over 50 schools with school garden programs, and this would enable them to kind of get into more classrooms to teach more children about nutrition. Um, so when you blow that up, that's about 8,000 that are in the U.S., giving us a $16.3 billion market. So that kind of is direct to, directly reflected in our business model. It's our first phase is to hit these um, nonprofits and to sell 900 units. That's our threshold. Cost, the cost is about $63 for us to make one unit, and we're selling those for $129 a unit to the nonprofits. And then once we hit that threshold, we're going to go into phase two when we're we'll able to do e-commerce to the home market and to, like, to the home toy market as well. And that'll be $149 a unit um, there. That's directly reflected here in our five-year projections and our financials. Um, reaching 116 in year one, that's kind of our phase one, we'll sell 900 units to our nonprofits. And then growing to 10 million in year five, um, which will in effect enable us to impact over 107,000 students. Um, additionally, we're going to work with our partners around measuring the standards and the common core and everything in the curriculum to make sure we're addressing everything as it updates. And also measuring the amount of engagements that the students have with the devices to see how much they're kind of using it because engaging learning is, is part of the mission as well. Um, um, and then kind of seeing how many classrooms we're in and what areas they're in so we can kind of measure our demographics and the geographic of where we are with, the, with part of our mission to reach more urban areas that are low income, giving them kind of a solution to, to the school garden challenge that I mentioned. And we have a really lovely team to do this with over 16 years of experience in product manufacturing, engineering, nonprofits, marketing. Um, we're currently looking for a curriculum designer. We do have um, some partners that are working with us. We're actually getting some prototypes into um, an academy and some schools in the Bay Area in the next few weeks with some funding we got from another competition. Uh, and they're going to help us build our initial curriculum, but we, we're looking for someone on the team to really build that out and make sure it kind of sticks for us. Um, and a lovely team of advisors, um, the director of company development from Wonder Workshop, which is 
a similar product for K through five age youth in robotics. Um, and then also David, who is a CFO at an education focused nonprofit, and Kelly, who um, was a former toy designer at Mattel and now is a teacher at Bodis um, and kind of private um, consultant. So, with that, thank you very much for your time, and we hope you'll join us in planting the seeds to grow a healthier generation. Questions? Great touch. Thank really you. Good. Thank you. Uh, this is this is what it looks like. This is like super, super, super early prototype. Um, it'll have knobs, interactive design. I usually have it with me, but it's with our engineer. She's um, she's the director of the lab at LACI now. So I actually just came back to her the other day, but it'll have three, so they can there's a control and two variables, so it's a full science experiment. Where do you plan on having them made? Um, that's a great question. Um, probably here. Mm -hmm. um, our engineer can answer these questions a lot better than I can because she costs them all out and so much she's been talking to people that she worked with when she worked she also worked at Mattel in toy design. So the manufacturers she's been talking to are people that she worked with when she was at Mattel. So sales. So how do you plan on selling it? So the the we're starting if you know the school system at all, it's antiquated and it's challenging to get into the public school system. So the nonprofit we found was this really beautiful marketplace that had a need that they, it's really hard for them to kind of grow some of their programs because of the challenges around school gardens. So that's who we've been talking to a lot of and they are, they are our direct in to the schools to create kind of that buzz and awareness in order, and also to prove our concept to pitch to the school districts. And that's a year long sales process and they typically buy all the curriculum at once. So that's building out our revenue prior to pitching that, and then at the same time pitching that, going into the home school, and like that home kind of toy market, where the curriculum isn't necessarily needed in the toy market, but that's kind of the, the tier that we've done based on the way the education system works, unfortunately, in the US. Are there companies that target the education system that you can partner with, that can be your, sort of be your partner? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a few different options, which like, the nonprofit education route has been this really great avenue for us. There's also, um, I mean, there are like education distributors that you can work through, but they're not necessarily your advocates as much as they are your platform. So that's a little bit more of a challenge. There are, we, I mean, we've been talking with Wonder Workshop, and I think that there's come up some kind of partnership opportunities. There, I wish I had a photo. It's like these cute little dots that you it teaches kids coding. And they use them in the classroom, and they've now they went retail to education, so now they're kind of learning that system. But it's they they're another potential partner we've been talking to, and, and she's been really great in helping us out with like the curriculum kind of development and that whole build out. You were saying about not like so many products. You were saying about knobs and all yeah. those things. Like what, what, what is that? What is that? So so basically, you have to give a plant water and nutrients and light from the bare minimum. So the knobs will control the amount of water you give, the amount of nutrients you give, and the amount of light that you give. So you, in essence, will have one that has a, contr it's a control, and then you'll vary, kind of do the other two based on research or kind of based on the curriculum and what you're learning about the different, like how much phosphorus, how much nitrogen, and how much water, how often to water. You'll be able to chart it all. Mm -hmm. track it all. And so it's like it's a fog box, so it's aeroponics. So like you'll, you'll see the roots, mm -hmm. you see the stems. So the idea is that they're like, fully immersed in the process of the growing of the plant. Mm -hmm. So they can kind of really understand. And, and the curriculum will also kind of relate to traditional farming, but the idea is that they're also learning the future of farming, <coughs> which is probably by the time they're 50, half of their food will come from a warehouse that's grown in a warehouse. Um, or maybe that's not gonna happen in my lifetime, but a six, six year old, that's a high possibility with oh, kind of removing towards in the US. Is it a K-8, K-12? K-5. 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 Mm -hmm. So the curriculum Just is that. key, right? Because when I was in school, they gave us a pot. Mm -hmm. And they said, here's some soil. Right. Here's a seed. Right. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. So the, the other piece of it is because, like I mentioned, the gap in standards, mm -hmm. like you can give someone resources to be like, teach kids about food. Here you go. But there's not standards around it. So that's unless you get a teacher that's like really jazzed to teach or that feels empowered mm -hmm. to like to grow things, it's really challenging. So 
giving a teacher like a box that's like here, this follows all the science standards and common core that you need to teach in these in this semester in a little box and you don't have to worry about right. learning how to grow things. Mm -hmm. This whole thing plug it in and damage now. So it's so all the yeah. Things. And the NGS standards, like the new science standards are like crazy and half the teachers we've talked to we've talked to like all panels. Overwhelming. Yeah. 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 They don't they're I don't that even that in every state, or is it different state to state? That's that's so national. national. The science okay. standards are national, and Common Core is national. So, that's where are you guys in product development? Um, we're early. We're very early. So this was our very first prototype, and we've we're just beyond this now. And we're built. We got we got some. We got a few thousand dollars. So we're doing twenty one, so seven full units, and we have a um, learning lab like academy in the kind of like the Bay Cities that's going to do, um, he's been doing curriculum design for like 20 years. You, so what, it's going to like work. Have you guys done a crowdfunding program for this yet? Mm -mm. Why not? I, I think maybe it's an option that we'll go to. If you kill um, it, this will absolutely kill it. And you set this up. Yeah. But, and then that's also like hitting more of the home market, which right, wasn't but, our like. That's another like, question. Why is like bang your head against the wall going after non nonprofits to start? Like, if you put a, just a consumer-based Kickstarter together with the focus being buy this to give to your class, to give mm -hmm. your, like I would buy this right now. I would sign up for the Kickstarter right now for it to give to my daughter's preschool. I buy two, one for mm -hmm. kindergarten, one for preschool. And I'd give it to them. And there's so many, like there's so many of us out there. Mm -hmm. that with the amount of money that we spend, if we think that we, we're helping our kids and then we can do something for our school at the same time, like, that's a win. Like we can put something together for this to, to run a Kickstarter where you guys are gonna raise enough money to blow through your nine hundred units that you mm -hmm. guys are gonna do that you're forecasting to do for year one. I would like I don't know, I would seriously think about that from okay. a from a, a we, crowdfunding standpoint. We went back and forth with like home school, home school and, and the customer customer acquisition costs are so much higher for the home market because of the marketing well, that's yeah. needed. So that was kind of our, our battle of like which way to go first and are kind of. I think that so I love the idea, was like, also <laughs> leading to the well, classrooms. Well, so. I think the classrooms way to go. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm not saying you should be selling to the selling this into the home because the curriculum, the whole story that you have, is is beautiful. I wouldn't change that at all. My only question is, the sales cycle. I'm trying to go to all these nonprofits and selling these. You're going to be selling one-off deals at these right. nonprofits. Setting up a crowdfunding, you need money to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can, <laughs> you can, you know, kill two birds with one stone. You can mm -hmm. run a crowdfunding campaign for this get all of the money for it. And basically, the whole pitch is still selling this to the school. Mm -hmm. But whether, just because you're selling the school doesn't mean the school has to pay for it necessarily. There's plenty of parents that will be buying this to give this to the school. Like That's what I would do. And, you're, and I love the vision of targeting some of the inner cities, these places in these food deserts mm -hmm. where they don't get to see this stuff at all. But don't start there. Start in the start in the wealthy areas. Like, like come after, like, I'm yeah. easy pickings. For this. <laughs> <laughs> the, the academy they're working with in the in this South Bay is same. Yeah. So, and he's like, all of our parents would probably buy these for yeah. whatever. You market it totally like, for the school, and we're still going to buy them for the home. Then we're going to buy them and give them a school. You know, they've got like 3D printers sitting in my daughter's elementary school. The parents are just yelling, they're sitting there. In <laughs> they the, can print their own, we can give them the We can just give them the layout. Yeah, I bought a, so, so the biggest crowdfunding campaign of all time is this, I'm an investor in this company, it's called Glowforge. They do the the, the 3D laser covers. Okay. They raised twenty-one million dollars before they even ever had a product made, and they're now they're a year late delivering the product. But they've got the twenty-one million dollars yeah. that they're using to do this thing. Like if you looked at Glowforge and just kind of how they did it, mm -hmm. they're marketing geniuses when they set it up. So, anyways, that's something. And Chase can connect us. I'm happy to okay. talk to you about this because yeah. this is really cool. And I think you've got a huge opportunity to to crowdfund the hell out of this thing. Thanks. So. Cool. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, what maybe you selling? What do you grow? What, what, what is that um, So we, we're still toying around with that too. Herbs are easier, but that's not as exciting for kids. So tomatoes is probably we really want to do strawberries, but the light intensity you need for strawberries is so much higher that right. that's harder to do. And like the size that we're doing it in, so, so it's to be determined. Yeah. Can so, we grow pot <laughs> for children? <laughs> But I'm just saying, like, that's another use case of like, would people be using this to, could they do it? Uh, not with the light. Okay. You would need, like, that's the good. light intensity that you need to grow cannabis is that's 10 good. times. That's yeah. good. Like, that's yeah. not an issue we want to be dealing with. Yeah. 
Turns out your product's funny. So. <laughs> Recreational usage. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's it needs so much more, so many more things than this provides. So. What was the other pitch contest you won? Um, we are in the finals, um, for the men's social, um, social impact engineering competition. So that we pitched next week for that. So um, you're you're doing a sorry. You're I'm at Marshall. And, business, and social and entrepreneurship. Is um, we have two of us that are in the same program at Marshall, and then a graduate of Viterbi. She finished in December at Viterbi. Cool. And so you said, who, why, why all the connections up north? Um, there's a lot more happening there than here, and yeah. a few more people that care about this than here. And um, the curriculum developer that I mentioned is in the Bay Area, and she, we started talking to her, and we kind of got connected with some other people in the area, and we just like spent a weekend and went to like meetings. So is your people. background in education? Um, no, it's not. It's in marketing. And I, I worked in youth, I worked for the 4 youth program at UC Extension for a year. I worked at like an after school, I volunteered an after school program for a while. So not direct education, but my, I guess my passion is in food systems and reconnecting to food systems. And we found this like huge void in, in children even understanding anything about where their food comes from and the challenge of, of doing that. I built in a above ground garden box last night in my front yard. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yes. I didn't think your names, by the way. I'm sorry. Oh, Brock. 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 Jane. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet y'all. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're growing cannabis in your food box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try the front yard.